So hello everybody and welcome back to another video and welcome to a episode 2 of my kit building series. Uh, if you didn't see episode 1, click this uh, little card up in the corner. We built the SO uh, tank wagon and in today's episode we are going to build in the brake van. So if you didn't see the last one, I bought four of these Dapol Kitmaster <coughs> uh, plastic scale model kits for double O slash HO scale. And I built the tanker, like I said in the last one, building the brake van, and I've also got a cattle wagon and a cement wagon. Uh, so they are uh, going to be two other videos coming up in the future. But today I'm going to be building this one. <coughs> now, the first episode was about 53 minutes long and that's because I wanted to show it step by step because it's the first one I wanted to make sure everyone could see this one uh, isn't as long as that um, I hope obviously you guys watching it you will know if it's longer or shorter at the moment because I'm filming this I'm hoping it's not going to be as long but certainly um, but yeah this is C038 brake van. Now I've already opened this to take a look at the instructions to know what paint I need. So if I just take the uh, card out and look at the instructions. And if you've watched my uh, tank video, you notice that these instructions are a bit different. Because the instructions on the uh, uh, tank wagon, they had the instructions, a picture. Uh, no, it had picture instructions, picture instructions picture instructions this is just one picture and all the instructions are here so it's a bit different but still should be easy to follow so if i just fold that up and put that to the side there let's get everything out of the plastic bag including the metal wheels like that and I'll just put these two the wheels on the coupling stuff on one side to go in my little pot of loose pieces that I use to keep all those loose pieces to store them if I need to. And here are the one, two, three, four, five, six screws. Mm, yeah, six, six screws. Six sprues. Um, <clears throat> so we've obviously got the uh, the roof, the doors, one at the uh, sides of the uh, underframe. We, we've got the other side of the underframe. We've got the doors and the uh, bottom of it. Uh, what we've got here, these will be the sides. You can tell these are the sides. There's quite a bit of flashing here. That's a lot of flashing. That'll be the main underframe, I presume. And here are the uh, decals. If you remember from last time, the decals were quite awful, but then these kits are over 50 years old. But not so many decals. They sometimes shouldn't have too much of a problem, I hope. Fingers crossed. Uh, but I'm just going to get everything set up and we can start the painting process. So the paints I'm going to use, I'll show you now and then I'll time lapse all the painting instead of showing you. But the paints I'm going to use for the roof, it recommends uh, slate grey, but I've got uh, light grey, which is not on the camera, light grey matte number 76, this, this is Revel Aqua Acrylic. Then it says black for the complete underframe, so same as the tanker, uh, black matte number 08. For the sides, uh, for the brown, I'm going to be using Dark Earth Matte number 82. Now, and this here doesn't look like it's brown, but it is brown on the inside. It, that picture there, or well, that sort of colour doesn't look particularly accurate. And then it says silver for buffer, head, bu buffer heads and um, engraved heads, which I've got silver for. And then I've also got rust just for a little bit of weathering. Uh, so they're the pets I'm going to use, but let's get on and start the uh, time lapse of me painting. So the first thing that I did is I painted the top of the roof in the Revel light grey, followed by the dark earth on the sides of the body. For the first coats, I didn't water it down, as if you watered it down, 
for the first coat it wouldn't stick to the uh, plastic properly so for the first coat always do a straight out of the pot coat and then water it down for the next coats if you want to get that perfect finish following this i used a coat of revel matte black on the underframe the vacuum brake cylinders the brake shoes the sole bar the footboards and all the other details like the vacuum pipes the buffer housing and the actual buffer beams themselves Following this, I watered down a second coat of Revel Dark Earth to a rough ratio of three parts paint to one part water. Or in my case, as I was going to be using a more, I doubled it to six part paint to two part water. Watering down your paint helps reduce the risk of brush strokes and also always paint in the opposite direction to the previous coat because this can also help reduce the risk of brush strokes. Much like before, I watered down a coat of light grey, however this time it was to a ratio of three parts paint to one part water, as I wasn't going to use that much, and added the second coat onto the roof. Then continuing on, again another rough ratio of three parts paint to two parts water, again doubled to six parts paint and two parts water to do a second coat of all the black parts as stated before. I also forgot to mention that I painted the underneath of the floor and the edges in black and the middle in brown. But following that, I finished up the touch means to the sideboards, the vacuum pipes, and then it was time for gluing. As I said last time, I used the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement and I added different little drops to each part of the underframe, glued this together onto the floorboards. Followed that, I used the back vacuum brake cylinder, then I added the sole bars onto each side. These were pretty difficult to get into place, and it made it even more difficult when trying to get the metal wheels in between them. I left it to dry overnight, and then I added the buffer beams and the buffers, which were very easily slotted into place in the small gaps on the buffer beams. Following this, I added the side of the body, followed by the two inner body ends. I then glued in the other side of the body, continuing on with the outer body ends. And finally, I added glue to the underneath of the roof and glued it into place. I then added the lamps on the three pieces on the back of the brake van. I did forget to paint these before I added them, however it was relatively simple to fit them anyway. I added a coupling to the end that would be attached to the wagons and then I added the vacuum pipes to each buffer beam. I then added a realistic screw link coupling to the end that wouldn't be coupled to anything as there was no need for a coupling because this would be at the back. I didn't time lapse this next bit as I wanted to show every single step of this piece. What I was doing is I was adding glue to different holes along the sole bars where pieces would slot into to attach the footboards. The footboards were a bit temperamental on one side. The first side, this side, they slotted in fine. However, I noticed on the other side, the paint had sort of blocked up some of the holes. So what I had to do is I had to puncture a little hole using uh, my knife and put glue in there. I had to leave these overnight and put extra glue on to make sure it fully stuck. They did manage to stick, just took a little bit of patience. And here you can see my solution to keep them in place using elastic bands. I then touched up the final bits with paint. I painted the lamps in white as indicated, but waited for that to dry before I added the red circles. I used aluminium to paint the buffers, and then once the white paint had dried, I added the red circles. I then touched up all the pieces in black and then all the pieces in brown, adding some very slight rust paint to give it a slight weathered feel. 
And the final step was to add the decals. Unlike the SO tanker, there was only four with these, and these were very small, but they still weren't the greatest quality, but I managed to get them on without any mishaps. And that was the final step. So let's head down to the railway and see how it performs. So here I am down in the railway and here I have the uh, freight van in front of me. And I'm about to fit it to the greatest freight consist I've ever seen. Wait for it. Tanker. Such a good freight train. And obviously the 3MT. Now in the last episode, built the uh, tanker and then I had the 3MT pulling it. So what I thought is every time I build a new wagon, I'll add to this sort of mini train. So I've now got a brake band to go at the end instead of just a tanker. But one thing I did want to point out before I started um, doing the running is on the buffers, you've got these hangy down bits. If I try and balance, uh, that didn't work, try and balance it on the fence. Here we go. Let's bring the camera up closer. There we go. You've got these hangy down bits just below my finger here. And there's four on each side. There's one about there and about one there. But there, it's these two main ones, middle ones here. Now, on the, the tanker, the buffer beam also has these hanging down bits, as you can see there. But they go, they slot into each side of the coupling. They don't get in the way of the coupling. Whereas on this, they did get in the way of the coupling, and the coupling wouldn't go on properly. So what I had to do is I had to trim them and cut them to literally that's how short they are I had to cut them otherwise the coupling wouldn't um, fit properly and that properly and that was causing it to derail because the couplings were getting stuck and not being able to turn properly and it was causing it to derail so I don't know if it's just me who has that problem or if any of you might have built this kit before um, I don't know if any of you have watching this have but if you have let me know if you've had this problem before don't expect anyone watching this probably has built this kit, but you never know. But anyway, let's get them on the track. That's the only criticism I have, but since cutting them back and um, doing it like that, it does seem to be uh, not derailing. It was always on this corner over here, always about there. Then I did something and then it kept derailing here, but it doesn't seem to derail anywhere now. But anyway, let's reverse the 3M net T backwards. Coupling up and coupling up. Yeah, that is one thing. Is the coupling on the three MT is much lower down, but it does it. It doesn't uncouple. It does pull it perfectly fine. So let's go forward at a de uh, about that speed. No, let's get a bit faster. Yes, there we go at that speed. Now fingers crossed. Please don't let me have jinxed it and it will derail. It. Please don't derail. I hope. I really hope I haven't jinxed it. Good, there we go. It's got round one lamp about derailing. Doesn't mean it's not going to derail, but that is so far so good. And as you can see, it's a very good runner from what you can see on camera. When it's, uh, before I did the edit it edits to make it fit, it wasn't the greatest of performance, which I will have to mark it down because that is how it comes out of the box. I have to make my own improvements to make it perform at its best, which I know it's a 15 year old kit then you kind of expect things like that, but I am going to have to mark it down for that reason, whether it do, even because of the age. But I'm now going to do what I normally do with my local reviews, go around and uh, you can watch it go around the layout. That's some very different angles, for some nice soothing, calming music. <laughs>
enjoyed watching that go about at different angles. I'm really happy with it, how I finished this off. There were some moments when it was a bit tough, but I'm glad it's finished now. And next video will hopefully be out. It'll be the uh, not the next video, maybe two or three videos time. I think the uh, third episode of this mini series will be out. But anyway, here are some of my uh, ratings and opinions on uh, what the Dapo um, break van, can't remember what tonnage it is, break van uh, is like. So overall for detail I'm giving it 4 stars. Uh, this is because for one main reason and that is the piece that I had to cut off that was getting in the way of the coupling. Because of that piece of detail I've had to mark it down. Uh, simply per for performance, uh, 4 stars. Obviously on camera it performed beautifully, but off camera, like I said, I had to trim those bits off, otherwise it would keep derailing because the coupling wasn't, um, it, the coupling kept sticking and wasn't making it able to turn as much. Uh, the decals, three stars. Overall the decals were slight, were better than the uh, tanker decals, mainly because there was less of them, but they were still were pretty poor quality, uh, but then again, these are 50 years old. Similar to the instructions, um, one picture showing all the pieces and a list. What I would have preferred is step by step with a picture showing where each bit goes. And finally, value for money, five stars. Simply because you can't get better value for money. This was seven pounds something or nine pounds something. Can't remember which one this was. Um, but wagons this size today can range between 15 and 30 pounds, depending on what it is, which is just ludicrous. For this size, 15 to 30 pounds for a pre-made one. These kit builds are perfectly adequate. Yes, you may have a few teething issues, but they're brilliant. But anyway, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss another one of my videos. And I will see you next time. Take care, have a good day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.